all right so let's now assume a case assume f is convex and Hessian of f is strictly positive definite what does this imply a straight convexity right so if the converse need not be true if f is strictly convex that need not imply that hessian of f is positive definite an example would be x to the 4 right at at x equal to 0 x to the 4 the hessian is 0 but then uh, the function is strictly convex and what is the definition like no like sort of geometric meaning of straight convexity yeah single optimizer so the function all like basically if i choose any other value let us so essentially if I look at this particular thing f of lambda x plus 1 minus lambda y this is strictly less than lambda of f of x of y for every x not equal to y and lambda in open interval 0 to 1 right. So that means you do not have continuum of minima you on, you will always have a unique minima and that is going to be global minimum as well. So, if hessian of f is positive definite can we invert this matrix right right. So, it I mean if it is po strictly positive definite or strictly negative definite you can always invert that matrix right. So, let us see what can we say about this these type of functions when f is strictly convex. So, the results that we showed they work for strongly convex case right. Can we guarantee something for strictly strict convexity case and the answer is yes, but then we may have to use a slightly different variant of gradient flow. So, this would be of the form of x if any of you are familiar with Newton's method you basically use the inverse of hessian there right. So, this is this is an uh, continuous time variant of Newton's method. So, instead of using the hessian uh, instead of using the gradient directly we essentially use hessian inverse times gradient ok. Uh, why did we use that to account for the curvature yeah. So, that is the that is the idea. So, again when when we talk about mapping optimization algorithms to dynamical systems there are not many choices of Lyapunov function that you can work with right. Either you can work with f of x minus f star that is one of the Lyapunov functions, but that would only make sense when you have uh, strong convexity because you can use peer inequality there. Because eventually when you take the derivative you are going to get the gradients and if you want to substitute the gradient in terms of f of x minus f star you would have to use peer inequality that is not the case here right. So, the other kind of Lyapunov function that we can use is half norm gradient f square. So, so when you consider this to be a Lyapunov function, so v dot turns out to be gradient of f transpose Hessian f x dot. And now if I substitute x dot you can see I can basically get rid of Hessian because Hessian times Hessian inverse is identity. So, I can get rid of the Hessian and v dot turns out to be. So, let me just be more precise and, and x dot is basically negative I have already looked negative. Okay. So, Hessian times Hessian inverse that is identity and what you are left with is minus ok. Is this clear? So, that is why we use the hessian inverse here because we otherwise there is no easy way for us to actually get rid of this hessian term that shows up. And for strictly convex case at least when you have hessian to be invertible this may make sense right. So, what do we get v dot is negative of this particular term which is minus 2 v ok. So, v dot this implies v dot is equal to minus 2 v or v converges exponentially fast. Again it does not tell us anything about the function uh, about the optimizer x, 
but we know that the Lyapunov function v converges exponentially fast. That means a gradient they vanish exponentially fast. Okay. All right, and that's why you see the class of functions which are strongly convex. They have specific relevance because, at least for those class of functions, you can guarantee accelerated convergence. For straight convexity like x to the four, when we are in the range minus one through one, right? The gradients they are very shallow, so it takes a lot of effort to accelerate the convergence, and that's why in general, for a strictly convex function, even when the Hessian is positive definite, you cannot uh, still guarantee convergence like exponential convergence to x star. With, so, you would see that most results uh, on exponential convergence in, 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 in the context of any optimization algorithm would actually end up assuming strong convexity. There are very specific cases like as I said PL inequality where you do not need to assume convexity to start with, but you still need to assume PL, PL inequality right. So, as long as you have those kind of uh, like sort of uh, non vanishing gradients uh, in picture, I mean you can still guarantee exponential convergence, but otherwise it becomes very difficult. So, what if we end up using like let us say, uh, is there any importance of, uh, well not importance, but at least I mean you know that the gradients, I mean you ideally want everything to converge as fast as possible, right. So, if you know something about the function, maybe from by looking at the gradients, then you can say something more, but you cannot in general say about the, the how x would converge to x star, yeah. So, uh, if you want uh, exponential convergence then you have to avoid the exponential, right. So, you do not want gradients to be to die exponentially. No, wh why not? Because then you have the optimal value in very small no, that's I mean anyway like near the optimal optimal everything would every algorithm would slow down right because you are making tinier and tinier progresses, but at least you are making some progress. I mean you are so you are that progress. So, again like the kind of progress that you are making it can be exponential or it can be like 1 over t kind of thing which is not exponential right which is just asymptotic. So, but then if you are still making progress with larger rates that is that is what you desire. So, interestingly enough if we consider the case when f is simply convex. Yeah, in continuous time as I said right. In continuous time x dot is equal to negative x or x dot equal to negative 10 x both have the same equilibrium and both will have uh, exponential convergence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, there is no because in you are always decaying along the trajectory continuously right. Whereas, the moment you start discretizing it, if you choose a very large learning rate, you are I mean that discrete time trajectory is actually going to be very different from the continuous time trajectory. If you choose smaller step sizes, you are going to be very close to that thing right. So, in there is no concept of learning rate in the context of continuous time. Learning rate sort of kicks in when when you when we talk about discretized algorithms. So, consider the case when f is simply convex. So, what can we say about these types of functions? So, well uh, if f is simply convex, uh, what is the second order condition for convexity? So, Hessian is positive semi definite. So, okay. so that is all we can say about the, so this is the second order condition for convexity. Okay. So, if, if uh, let us say we end up choosing the same Lyapunov function v, 
So again, in this case, first of all, Hessian is not invertible, right? So we cannot use a Newton's flow. We will have to use this usual gradient flow. So let me first write down the dynamics. Since it's not invertible, we use gradient flows. That means x dot is negative. Okay. So now if I choose a Lyapunov function v to be same as half norm f square, again as I said there aren't much choi many choices. So this either this or f of x minus f star would work depending on the kind of assumptions that you make on the function. So v dot turns out to be you can be creative and try to come up with Lyapunov function which are non-intuitive, but at least intuitively these I mean these and I am going to talk about one more type of Lyapunov function would, would be a good sort of suitable candidates, but not more than that. So V dot turns out to be gradient of f transpose Hessian x dot and if x dot I write in terms of gradient of f this is transpose Hessian and this thing is less than equal to 0. Right, because the matrix Hess, the Hessian of f is positive semi definite. So, all we can say is v dot is less than or equal to 0. What can we conclude from this? Not, not, not even asymptotic, just stability, just stability, right. For asymptotic, you want v dot to be strictly less than 0. So, all we can conclude is stability of equilibrium. So, that means your iterations are not going to go off, but I mean convergence of x to x star is also not guaranteed here at least just from this analysis. So all we can conclude about all we can conclude is uh, your iterations your iterates x they are going to be not like they are basically going to be bounded around your x star, but whether or not they converge to x star that at least from this we cannot uh, we cannot argue. Right? So you would have to use something called Lasalle invariance and I think that would be part of your homework where you want to show that in fact uh, even in scenarios where v dot is less than or equal to 0, there is a way to argue that uh, way, way to argue asymptotic stability and not just stability. So we would, I would leave this for now. Uh, any questions on this? So again the, the more the assumptions you make on your functions, the better rates you can guarantee but then that also restricts the class of function that you can work with. It does not mean that if you use like let us say I mean if I use simple if I choose a function f which is uh, which is not which is let us say strictly convex but not strongly convex, it is it may or may not be possible to guarantee. So, there are no negative results of the form that if f is strictly convex and not strongly convex you cannot guarantee exponential convergence. That kind of results I mean I mean we do not have that kind of results, but in not like I mean because all of these are anyway sufficient conditions, but if you if you have strongly convex functions and functions that all that are also L smooth those for all I mean for those functions simple gradient flow would also guarantee exponential convergence ok. So, that is the that is the sort of main summary for this. For straight convexity you can you would have to use something like uh, uh, if the Hessian is invertible you would have to use something like Newton's method to guarantee a, ex, at least to guarantee ex, exponential convergence of the Lyapunov function or the gradient ok. In this one? No, in this one it is grey, ok. Mm -hmm. Right. So, yeah, so that is a good question. So, if in this example here, if we had used simple gradient flow, we would have gotten v dot is negative gradient of gradient f transpose Hessian f times gradient f, right. And Hessian f we know that it is positive definite. So, this would we would have gotten v dot is strictly less than 0. So, that means asymptotic stability. But in order to guarantee more than asymptotic stability, so asymptotic stability of x to x star which is anyway that is what you can derive even in this case as well. 
but at least we can derive the exponential <coughs> like uh, exponential convergence of v to 0 whereas in the other case it would have been the asymptotic convergence of v to 0 as well so that that is the difference so if you are using the curvature information you are likely going to accelerate the algorithm better than if you are not using the curvature information okay sometimes curvature information is uh, useful so for instance let's consider this example it's a function of two variables x y and let's say this is x square plus let's say half x square the 0 0.000005 or maybe not something like this okay so what is the gradient of this function x the first term and the second term is 1 okay so that's the gradient now let's say i st like i want to minimize this function and i start at 10 comma 5 something like this that's my initial condition condition so that's your x naught comma y naught right and now i want to optimize this so what would be the gradient in that case so you can see the gradient is largely dominated by x so while i will be making very sort of uh, large updates in the x direction i am almost making no updates in the y direction okay so if i really look at let's say forget the continuous time uh, version for now let's just for for the sake of simplicity just look at the uh, discrete time variant so xk plus 1 is xk minus let's say yeah gradient with respect to x and this would be your okay so if i look at these updates so in the while in the x direction i'll be making a huge sort of update in the y direction that doesn't change by much right and if i look at this initial condition phi if i want to reduce this to so what what is the optimal solution here zero zero right so if i need to reduce this five to zero that will take a lot of iterations right and that's where the curvature information in some sense is useful and that newton's kind of method is useful so instead of let's say using the newton's law i, I do a simple hack to it so i design a new algorithm I also divide this by the norm of this and just for me for numerical stability I add a small epsilon to it. Now if I look at this particular algorithm in this case both and x both x and y directions are now normalized right so you are making a similar amount of like update in both the directions just by dividing just by normalizing it with respect to the uh, inverse of the gradient okay so this norm of this quantity is 1 and i think what you can view this is you can particularly view this as an adaptive gradient step right so at each step at at each step at each iteration your step size changes and it changes with the norm of the gradient so i can view this as an adaptive gradient step method but what you are really doing is you are normalizing your x and y direction and that is what your hessian inverse in some sense is trying to do here because of the hessian you may have a you, you may have lost landscape which may look something like this right so while you will be making like updates largely in this direction in, in order to get from here to all the way to this point it will take a lot of effort right the moment you make it hessian inverse you kind of change this landscape lost landscape to like these circularly looking kind of landscape right and therefore every direction is sort of uh, equally preferred and you can make faster update you basically you whatever curvature is there you sort of invert the effect of it by using hessian inverse 
and that is that is how you can accelerate convergence whereas in this case if i start somewhere over here it will take me a lot of iterations to get to the optimal okay so this gradient normalization this is quite useful and that's something that we are going to formally look at it in today's lecture so i was telling that there aren't many choices of Lyapunov function that you can work with. Uh, as I said, f of x minus f star and half uh, norm gradient f square. So, what are the choices of Lyapunov function? Again, in the we are looking at it in the context of optimization algorithms being mapped to dynamical system. So, one of them can be f of x minus f star. Another that we have looked at extensively is uh, in some text or in some cases you may also find this to be useful. Right. So, this is also a valid choice of Lyapunov function. Why? Because only at x equal to x star this is going to be 0, everywhere else it is going to be in positive, right. So, these are valid Lyapunov function. This in certain literature you you can you can uh, find use of something called Bregman divergence. So, does anyone know what Bregman divergence is? So, Bregman divergence, so let me write this. Let me first define Bregman divergence. So, Bregman divergence is defined for a function h which is strictly convex. So, you consider f to be like let us say you are working with f which is strongly convex or strictly convex. So, you can also define something called Bregman divergence and what it is really saying is so this particular term. So, if the function is strictly convex this fun this particular term is strictly greater than 0 if p not equal to p right. And otherwise, it is always greater than equal to 0. If h is convex, this term is always greater than equal to 0. If it is strictly convex, it is strictly greater than 0 if p is not equal to q. And if it is strong, con if h is strongly convex, this term happens to be nothing but mu over 2 times norm p minus q square, right? Which is anyway the Lyapunov function, like this kind of Lyapunov function, or maybe this kind of Lyapunov function that you can similar to these kind of Lyapunov functions. But this is another form of uh, another kind of Lyapunov function that one can potentially use and that is called Bregman divergence ok. But you would require h to be strictly convex in this case just convexity alone would not help because in that case this this inequality or this particular term is just greater than or equal to 0 not strictly greater than 0 right. So, that would not help. So, function yeah a function your function f or something added to your function. So, again depends on uh, so we at least in this course we would not be looking at it too much, but uh, there is this paper by Michael Jordan uh, which is on variational perspective and optimization it is a 2016 paper 2016 PNAS paper by Michael Jordan. So, Jordan actually uses looks at uh, different uh, like many classes of optimization algorithms in continuous time dynamics like in continuous time, but instead of using Lyapunov function like they basically they use uh, Bregman divergences to to basically obtain convergence rates. So, you can if you are interested you can uh, read this particular paper I think it is titled variational perspective in optimization. I will also post this paper on course teams. Okay. So, 